Hi, I'm Natasha, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. In this video, I'll be making this audio visualizer using an 8x8 NeoPixel matrix, an audio analyzer, and a micro bit. Let's get started. If you've been following me, you've probably seen my LED bike project. The next step that I want to upgrade is to make my animations on the bike react to music. But before I go disconnecting wires and changing things on the main project, I wanted to create something small that I could keep at my desk while I'm experimenting with creating these audio reactive LED animations. This project is made possible by an audio analyzer. Most people use these with Arduino, but I wanted to see if I could use it using Microsoft Make Code so that I could integrate it into my larger bike system. Let me show you how it works. There are three important pins on the audio analyzer, a strobe pin, a data pin, and a reset pin. So I went ahead and assigned them here, and then I set up the matrix and I gave each column of LEDs its own variable using this range feature. And you can see me here going through and making sure that I selected the right number of LEDs, those red bars that are showing up. And then I set two arrays, one of the columns that I just created so that I could iterate through those. And then I created a frequency array that was filled with the frequencies that the audio analyzer will break the signal down into. So there's seven bands, seven frequencies available here. So that will be handy for me to create animations with. Okay, so let's put it to work. The first thing that you do is you reset the audio analyzer clean by setting the reset pin high and low. And then the idea is you set the strobe pin high and low to initiate the sample. And then you read the data that it's giving you. And then I do something with it. So I created audio sample and then I mapped the audio sample from zero to a high sensitivity. This sensitivity is set using my buttons up here button A and button B, it's basically just setting the maximum so that if you are listening to quiet music, you don't have to turn it up to get a really nice animation. You can actually just make it more sensitive or reduce the range that the audio is being displayed across. And then um, the map two, I have set eight pixels high, and then I left this at negative two instead of zero because I thought it looked a little bit nicer to have more blank space in my animation, but that could be changed as well. Same here if the audio mapper is less than one, set it zero. So there's a little bit of just data massaging here. And then I go ahead and add that value to my frequency array at the spot that corresponds with that frequency. And then I do something with the data. So in this case, I use this bar graph block to map the value that came in up to a certain number. And of course, there's so much more you can do with these values that came in. So I'm excited to keep going and making more animations based on this audio. I'm here testing this and I realized that I don't actually have my royalty free music yet for the final edit. So the only thing I know we have rights to is my old video. So here is a test with my have video. Have happy birthday written in LEDs. Can you embed an LED matrix inside of a birthday cake? That's right, we're taking birthday cakes to a whole new level. My computer's audio out is set to both my headphone jack and my speakers. That's how I can hear it and see the visualization at the same time. So look up how your computer can do that so that you can do the same thing if you're working on this. And if you're wondering why this is reacting to my speech, I have this cable plugged into my microphone's headphone jack as we speak, so you can see my voice visualized on it as well. Visualizing everything. 
with the breadboard circuit working, now it was time to make it look nice and put it into a case that will sit nicely on my desk. So I found this puck holder that is the perfect size for the 8x8 matrix. And the idea is that I'll fit all of these components inside this acrylic box. One of the things that I wanted to do was use this micro bit edge connector adapter to make my own little perf board accessory. The only trouble was I didn't realize that these pins were not actually in alignment with a standard perf board. They're actually staggered so they don't fit in. So I had to cut off most of them just to get access to at least the front row. And that ended up causing me a ton of trouble later in the project. So we'll get to that. But at least I had access to the front row of pins. So that was maybe half of the pins that I needed to solder to were available to me on the back. Once I decided where the components would fit in the box, I made some markings on the acrylic with Sharpie so that I could put holes in it. And I just used my drill press to place the holes where I wanted. It was actually pretty convenient to have a clear box because I could use the markings on my cutting mat and just look through the clear acrylic to mark it appropriately. And then I had some holes. They're not perfect, but it'll do to be my desktop robot companion. I chose to put the NeoPixel matrix and the buttons on connectors first so I could get the buttons into the box and then also so that I could disconnect the NeoPixel matrix if I ever wanted to use it in a different project for a test or just have an easy swap connector for it. And then it was time to solder it all together. Because this breakout board has no labels, I used Sharpies to label the individual tiny pins so that I knew which ones to solder to. And the components were held together with some glue tape. This was probably one of the hardest soldering sessions I have ever had in my life. I do not recommend that you do this. I tried to get those wires in there and soldered to those individual pins and oh my gosh, it is a mess. It is embarrassing. I actually had to end up breaking one of the pins that I didn't need because I just could not get it to stick to one pin and not the other. Oh my goodness. Well, um, it's done now, but I hope that you don't follow in my footsteps and you buy a different solution for the micro bit if you decide to try this at home um, because that was rough. So let's put it together. So let's see, I'm gonna put, um, I have my holes up here. So I'm gonna put this guy in here. It should kind of pressure fit into place Ooh. I don't like the sound of that oh there we go it looks a little did I bend it um I think we're fine the nice thing is is that it's kind of like all sitting there nicely so now let's see let's do the buttons so I have these buttons on the connectors so that I could put them through these holes on the side. And let's do a little ring and then the screw. There we go. One, two. Ooh. All right, so now I'm just gonna plug them in and since I don't actually know which one is which, we'll find out if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, I'll just switch up here and plug it in. 
That looks nice. Beautiful. And now we have the frame for our NeoVixel strip. I have some of these clear glue dots. They're actually not dots, they're squares. So I'm going to put them on the four corners of this plastic frame, and then I'll stick the NeoPixel matrix right down to them. And since they are optically clear, they won't show up that much. Oops, I already messed that one up. See, it's all gooey. Whoop. Okay, okay put them in the corners. Lay that down nice and flat. Um, it gets more clear when you press it down real good. So it's kind of there we go. Isn't that amazing how perfectly that fits? I'm just gonna smoosh it down. Oh, you know that might actually reflect. Well, we'll find out. We will find out, and then I plug it in here. Another plug, okay. And then somehow I have to see about getting this to kind of fold over correctly. There we go. Ta-da! All right, let's go try it out. Let's get my computer. Gosh, I forgot that it's a new micro bit. Ah, oh, so excited! Okay, so at this point, after having such a tough soldering session, I was convinced that this whole project was not going to work because all of that soldering had to be correct in order for it to work. So, I was pretty down at this moment. Alright, let's just check it all out. So the buttons work. He's got ground going to ground. He's got power going to power. Okay. Let's try. I'm plugging this. I'm plugging it back in. Oh, there we go! Needs to be replugged. Yay! Ah, look at it! The thing that was wrong is the audio cable just wasn't pushed in all the way. So as soon as I unplugged and plugged it back in, it worked. That's troubleshooting for you. Sometimes it is just a simple thing, and I was so happy that I didn't have to go back and solder anything again. Whew! Now we have the situation where I turned the volume down on my computer, but I still want to see the visualization. But since the volume is down, it's not showing. So now I'm going to use my buttons to increase or decrease the sensitivity until I like the way the animation looks. So, whoa, too much. Okay. I think that looks nice. So now I can listen to the music at whatever volume I want and still set an animation that looks good on the display. And the opposite might be true where you turn up the volume and then all of a sudden the animation is very full. Cool. And I'm gonna turn it down. So next steps are creating more animations with my new desk toy and then eventually integrating what I learned here into my larger bike project. In fact, the next project I'm working on is adding more LEDs to my bike wheels. So be sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out. I'll see you there.